Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell tutorial on data tables. Now we've actually seen data tables already in our GUI uh, videos. Uh, we've actually used them to load data grids, but we've actually never taken a look at data tables uh, separately to actually see how efficient they are at storing data and filtering data. So we're actually be taking a look an example afterwards of just importing a CSV and then using the PowerShell methods of piping uh, with a where clause to filter the data and actually see where the data tables would actually be very beneficial to use. Uh, so I've created this data, uh, the CSV data, uh, with a header of just sequence, first name, last name, and age. Now this is all randomly generated data. I have 10,000 lines. Uh, so I figured that that would be a big enough set to actually really show uh, the beneficial um, uses of data tables, of course, with smaller data sets. Uh, the differences get very, very minimal, and at that point really doesn't matter. Um, but definitely if you extrapolate this to millions of rows, um, it definitely gets significantly better. So let's go ahead and let's actually get started by first creating our data table object. So let's create a variable called data table, and we're going to make that equal to new object and that's going to be an object of system.data.data table. And then what we need to do is we need to load in that CSV data and actually create our columns and then load in the data for it. So whereas compared to if we were using an array list or just importing the CSV data was import dash CSV, with an array list, we just create our array list, we load in the data, we create the objects. Um, with the properties that we want, and then we store those objects into the array list. What a data table is, we actually need to set the columns first, and then what we do afterwards is we insert the rows um, with the uh, data ordered exactly as we ordered the rows um, in our, uh, the exact way that we ordered our columns. So let's first go ahead and let's actually import this data dash uh, data.csv. So we're going to create a variable called CSV data, and we're going to make that equal to get content. And we're going to do a path here, and we are just going to grab the path of our data here. Let's do shift, copy path, and let's paste that in here. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create our columns variable. And now our columns variable is actually going to be equal to CSV data square bracket zero. So that's actually going to select the first line in our CSV file, which we know is going to be the header. And we are going to actually split that on a comma because we know that it is a comma delimited uh, CSV file. So if we actually run all of this code here and we look at our columns variable, we will actually see that we do get an array of columns. And then the only other thing that we need to do now is actually remove that first line from the data. So when we actually iterate through it, we don't insert the column row as a row of data. So let's actually go ahead and reassign our CSV data var uh, variable to CSV data. And we're gonna pipe that to select and then space dash skip one. So that will actually uh, pipe the CSV data, we're going to select everything that's in there, and we're going to skip the first line. And then what we need to do now is we need to associate or assign those columns to our data table. So to do that, we're going to do data table dot columns, and we're going to do a dot add, and here we're going to do a, an add range. Uh, so you can do an add if you want to add an individual column at a time, or you can do add range and add a um, array of column names. So we're going to pass in our columns. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do a for each loop to iterate through our rows in our file. So I'm going to do a for each row in CSV data, open and close curly bracket. So I'm going to put a void here uh, because what happens when you add a row into a data table you actually get the data that you're adding in as an output. I don't really want to display that to the screen. That makes a lot to look at at the end. Uh, so we're going to do a data table dot rows dot add. And once again here, 
we're going to add our row. Uh, but we also need to do a dot split once again on the comma just to separate those values out. And then let's go ahead and let's do data table. And let's just do select uh, first one just to see the top value here. So as you can see, that goes pretty fast to load in the 10,000 lines of data. As we can see here, we get our column names and we have our first line of data, which we actually see here, it is correct. Uh, so we know that it worked okay. So now to actually filter this data, there's actually a very uh, cool way to do it with data tables, but that actually requires a new object called a data view. So what I'm gonna actually filter on is I want everybody with whose age is 30 or over. Uh, so let's actually create a variable here. Uh, I'm actually gonna call it age filter uh, because what I'm gonna be doing later on. So age filter, we are gonna go ahead and create that to a new object. And we're gonna make that object of type system.data.dataView. And we're gonna load up that view with data table. So that's gonna take all the data from data table and put it into this data view object. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are gonna go and do a age filter here and dot row filter. And what we can do here, we're gonna make that equal to a uh, set of double quotes. And here we're gonna put a conditional statement that probably most people are used to, uh, very similar to like a SQL statement. Uh, so we're just gonna do age greater than or equal to 30. And let's just go ahead and let's see what that age filter is. All right, so there is everybody over the age of 30. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and let's do another one here. So I'm just gonna copy those two lines and let's do a lesser than 30. And let's see what that looks like. So here we can actually see that it doesn't actually change what is actually in, in age filter. Um, so this data table will always have all the data. And then when we apply a filter to it, it just changes what data is actually visible. So as you can see here, we select everything that's over 30, uh, but then everything that's under 30, and we actually do get the correct data back. So that's actually awesome for this. Uh, this is where the benefits really, really kind of show is when we start doing multiple filters um, on a certain data set. So let's actually go ahead and let's see how fast we can do these two filters and actually do the entire creation of the object and loading the data in. So to do that here, we've actually seen this before. Uh, so we can actually measure the efficiency here with just measure command and then expression. And we're gonna do a curly bracket and let's do the closing curly bracket all the way at the bottom here. So if we run this, we actually see that it runs the entire line of code in 252 milliseconds. Now, of course, uh, that will vary um, depending on how busy your computer is at doing other things uh, and also how much RAM your computer has, uh, the CPU uh, and a bunch of different factors. But here we can see here that we're running it and we're getting kind of like in the 170 to 230 range, sometimes 260. Uh, which isn't that bad. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's actually compare this to just a simple import CSV and doing a pipe where clause. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's create our variable here of list data. And we're gonna store that to uh, import CSV. And we are gonna make our path here. And we're just gonna copy that same path. So we're dealing with the exact same data and we're going to do the delimiter, which is a comma here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a list data and we're going to pipe that to where age is greater than or equal to 30. And let's do a list data and we're going to pipe that to oops, list data and we're going to pipe that to where age is less than 30. All right, and let's go ahead and let's measure the command here and let's do an expression. 
open curly brackets and close the curly bracket over here. And if we run this here, oops. So already we can see that we get a very, very high value. Now, of course, like I said before, uh, this will uh, kind of vary. So we see here 335. We run it again, we get 246, 237, 294, 3, 234, 226, 271, 245, 231, 294, 237. So as you can see, we're always in the kind of mid to 200s to low 300s in milliseconds. Uh, but with the data table, we actually still get mid uh, 100s. And then the high points are about the mid 200s. Uh, so its highest point with the data table is actually the lowest point, uh, which is the simple import CSV. Now, of course, looking at both of these, um, the import CSV is definitely a lot easier to write. Um, but if you're dealing with a lot of data, uh, like this would definitely have to be a significant amount of data that you're going to be dealing with. And actually, it would really depend on how many times you're going to be filtering that data. It's really the filtering that makes that really, really big difference. Um, the data table will be able to filter data a lot faster um, than this pipe object. Uh, so that's really going to where it comes in. If we kept adding uh, different filters here, so if we added another one uh, here and we said uh, we want where the age is greater than or equal to uh, 65 to find the people that are retired. And let's once again do that down here and do 65. Uh, so if we run the data table version, we will see that we get uh, 224, 202, 245, 178. So the times really don't change in the data table, but as soon as we go into that import CSV and where we're piping, uh, we're going to see now that we get 367, 365, 316, 309, 367, 312. So now we're constantly in the 300s. Uh, so the more times that you're going to be filtering data, uh, definitely I would recommend you going with the data table. And just the larger the data set, I would definitely recommend uh, data tables as well instead of just the simple import CSV. You're going to spend a little bit more time typing out your code, uh, but if you're dealing with hundreds and thousands or even millions of lines of data, uh, the data table will definitely show great efficiency um, if PowerShell is your language of choice for dealing with that type of data. Uh, so that is pretty much it with uh, data tables for this video. If you guys have any comments or questions, please let me know down below in the comment section. If you guys have a specific question for something in PowerShell, let me know or anything else programming or system related. Uh, let me know if it's something that I know the answer to and that can benefit a lot of people. I will make a video on it. Uh, if it's a little bit more specific, I'll just answer you directly. And also be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. And also hit that notification bell to be notified when the next video comes out. I will see you guys on the next video.